Hi guys, just wanted to talk to you about a patient I had today that's overstriding in a non-injured runner. Um, my name is Doug Adams, Association of Clinical Excellence, and what we're looking at here is a 3D file of the runner. Uh, we're kind of watching them from all angles. We're on the right side right now. And with overstriding, we're really looking at that initial contact, where that foot lands. And you can see with this one here that as we're progressing, that foot landing pretty far in front of the body. And we're seeing that the foot lands even in front of the knee. And in this patient, we saw this even more so on the left side. Um, so you can see the knee's really straight, the foot's pointing up towards the ceiling. So this is definitely some of that overstriding, and there's not an exact definition of overstriding, but this is some of the context clues that we look for. Um, so we were looking at this patient and, and just ways that we could help them improve their performance and reduce risk of injury. But here we see a couple things you'll notice a low cadence and a high amount of bounce up and down. Uh, we also noticed a, the strike from center of mass, how foot they're landing in front of them was high, as well as the angle of the foot, and we see that they had some contralateral pelvic drop on the right side. So the first thing we wanted to try was a metronome, and we set it to about 172 steps per minute, and we said, you know, let's kind of see what this looks like. Um, and the patient reported uh, that it definitely felt different, but a little awkward. As we see, the foot is definitely landing closer. If you look at some of the numbers, it went down from that 32 to about 28, so four centimeters landing closer to the body, which is uh, helpful. But they reported that it, it felt very awkward, and we were seeing that still a little bit of a flat gait, almost a little shuffling, um, and we see not much. So now, this was actually, we showed some live feedback, and we'll show you the graph that we showed in a second, but we gave him the cue of pretending that he was running on ice, and had him try this out, and gave him a cue to see if he could get the hips driving a little bit more, um, because we're going to see a graph in a second, but what we see with this uh, is that he's definitely landing with that foot stacked underneath of the knee. Uh, when the foot hits the ground, and that's what we're really looking for. Maybe a little bit less on the left, still a little bit more on that side. Um, but what we see is this, as we look at the amount of hip flexion and extension that we see, this is the feedback, this is the graph he saw while he was running to do some motor learning principles. And you can see here as he was going um, that he was able to really even that out left and right. So he was having equal hip flexion on the left and right side. Um, so that's interesting. Now if you go back and compare that to the metronome here, what we see is that when we looked at some of the hip flexion angles there, there was quite a difference left versus right. And so again, this is a non-injured runner here. Here. Um, but there were some things that we saw from the, his movement screen, his running readiness assessment that we saw. But that same graph here with just the metro, we saw now that uh, these are quite different mechanics. And we're seeing that there's not as much left hip motion during swing phase. We're definitely seeing some changes. And the live feedback really made a difference for um, this person because they felt much better and they felt much more capable of doing this. So this is a really good example of trying a couple different cues out, seeing which one feels better, but also being able to match it up with the patient's subjective report and being able to see that these are some things that you can do and some things that you can try. If you don't have the live feedback, if you don't have some of that 3D stuff, um, don't worry. There's other ways that you can focus on some of these things. You can identify some of these overstriding mechanics, even with 2D sagittal motion. Uh, but it's really nice to be able to look at this and say that the goal isn't to meet the cue. The cadence didn't necessarily get what we wanted. Um, we have to make sure that the cue we're giving is actually changing the mechanics the way that we want. And we saw that we were having improved symmetry uh, and still reduction in that strike from center of mass. So we wound up having him doing a gait retraining plan that focused on some of these things where he's uh, focusing on driving the hip and knee. We did a few sessions with a live feedback to make sure that he was able to see what that feel like. So his focus of attention was really on getting that foot off the ground like he's running on ice and driving that left hip a little bit more. So a good example of somebody overstriding, a good example of how you can help to do some gait retraining and because this was a non-injured runner, we didn't have a lot of mobility restrictions or there were a few motor control or strength deficits. And that's why we see some inconsistency in his gait retraining, but definitely something that we can address with some exercises and some drills to make sure we have a comprehensive plan. So hope uh, you guys enjoy this and please leave some comments and let us know if this is helpful. And uh, we hope to see you in the future.